like he said, 28 days later is one of them, but it sucks, so don't see it. But um, the, the, the guy, he is infected by this disease and he turns into a zombie. And his main goal is to just, is to drag everyone down with him. Like, all of the people that are left who are not zombies, he just wants to drag them down. Um, when we're surrounded by zombies, there's nothing we can do but be dragged down with them. Like that's basically what happens. Because you can't you can't run from a zombie. They will catch you. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a forest fire, and you're growing like you're a tree, and you're growing and wow. into a beautiful nature. But there's a tree that's on fire, and it catches on to you, and before you know it, the whole forest is burned down. And all you have is ashes. And that's no fun, because then you don't have beautiful nature to look at. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm really awkward. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so, there are two things you can do to kill a zombie. Um, you can kill them with kindness, like positivity and, and joy, and you can avoid them. But the first one, like, if someone comes up to you and is like, oh, you're really ugly, and you say, oh, well, you're pretty, negative people can't, like, fight against that. They can't be like, oh, yeah, I'm really pretty. Like, what? So, <laughs> you can't really, like, fight that. So, yeah. So just, like, Remain in God's joy, because those people are only going to drag you down. Uh, the other thing you can do is avoid them. I feel like in my life, I'm kind of surrounded by negative people sometimes, just like at school and at my house and just all that. And those people, all they wanted to do was drag me down. All they wanted to do was steal my joy and my happiness. If you know me, I'm, I'm generally a happy, happy person. So, but when I'm surrounded by negative people and people who are complaining and just not not remaining in God's joy, it, it brings you down, and you can't really you can't really fight that unless you have God's joy. Maybe God is calling you to step away from some people that are dragging you down. I know that in my life. God has called me to step away from a couple of people, and it's really hard. It's something that's extremely difficult, and you're, you kind of feel like you're in a lonely place because physically there's no one there, but God is our provider. He knows what we need. He knows our hearts, and he mm -hmm. knows that for me, that I need physical people. I need affection, and so he has replaced those people with people who are um, building me up and who are remaining in him. Mm. And I thank God that he's done that. Because the people that I had to step away from, it was a good thing for me. It says in his word, in Romans, it says that, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Yeah, God... He will work all things together for the good of us, the good of those who love him, because he has a plan for our lives. He, he planned out our lives before we were even thought of on this earth. And sure. he, he will work all things together for the good of those who love him, like it says. And I love God, and I know that there have been hard times and struggles in my life, but this verse has kind of been my promise. God promises me that he will work all things together for my good. So, it's it's really hard to leave your friends because they're kind of like, at this age, they're kind of like our stability, our, our family, so to speak. But those people, some of them aren't really true friends. They aren't people who want to see you do good, and God wants to see us do good. And mm -hmm. So we kind of have to follow what he says because he promised us that and we have to remain in his promise mm -hmm. um, the other thing you can do is examine your
yourself. Ask yourself three questions. Am I negative? Am I, am I constantly complaining? Am I an Israelite? And, um, <laughs> you might not get the last question, but um, it talks about in the uh, book of Numbers how the Israelites are searching for the promised land. And um, it was, they spent 40 years in the desert looking for this place. And as they were circling around, they found out later that the promised land was six miles away. I could run six miles in two hours. <laughs> Not a fast runner, but I could do that. It wouldn't take me 40 years. A lot of people died. <laughs> so, and then they reached the promised land. Um, yeah, they walked in circles eating nothing but manna. And they constantly complained about how that's all they had to eat and how tired they were. And I'm not going to lie. Eating something for 40 years is kind of lame. Because I had to eat PB&J for 40 years. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be a little upset. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but all they were doing was looking down. All they were doing was looking at this desert that was around them. It's like they had tunnel vision, that all they could see was down, they couldn't look up. And it's kind of like, okay, when you have a broken neck, you can't look up because your neck is broken. <laughs> but, like, God is our physician. Okay, anyway, that's a bad analogy. <laughs>
feel like I've had to persevere through a lot of things in my life, but because of them, I can stand up here and talk to you. Like a year ago, I would never have agreed to this. I would never <laughs> have walked through the opportunity that God has given me. Uh, I was at a church called Jubilee, and a guy named Michael Pitts said, not all things are God sent, but God used. God can, God has used things in my life to build me into the person I am today. Um, some of you may know, a year ago, I was in a very dark place. I was very depressed, and I didn't have any hope for any future. I thought that I would always be like that. I thought I would always feel that way. But I began coming to youth group. I began really seeking God's face in my desert. And he's given me a hope. He's given me a passion for for people who are depressed, for people who are cutting, for people who just aren't in that dark place. And if I hadn't gone through that, if I hadn't gone through those things, I would have never I would I would have never been processed. <laughs> um, you have to go through hard times because they're what builds us into who we are. My hard times have built me into the person that is talking to you today. My hard times have built me into a stronger person, a person who can stand up here and talk to you about hope and talk to you about what God has done in my life. You may be going through really difficult times, but I encourage you not to look down, not to think about all the bad in your life, but to think about Jesus and to think about his promise. You have to, I can stand up here and tell you all of these things. I can tell you God has given me hope, God has done all of these things in my life, but unless you open your Bible and actually read his promises, <laughs> you won't ever embrace them. Like, they won't become personal for you. One, uh, I don't remember what book it's in, but a promise in the Bible says that anyone who comes to the Father will have a crown of life when they get to heaven. And I've made that kind of like my personal promise from God. And, and I just encourage you to open your Bible and actually read what God says, because why should you believe me? <laughs> why should you believe me? It's, it's God who has, who has given me these promises. And, and God wants to promise you everything. He wants to promise you an eternal life. And That's right. That's right. That's right. That's but unless you open your word and you read that, unless you embrace it, it won't ever become real. It won't ever become tangible to you. That's right. Um, so as I speak, I mean, as I wrap up, I want to encourage you not to look down, not to look at all of the the horrible situations that you have, not to look at all the people that you've lost in the past. But to think about God and to think about the fact that he promised that he will work all things together for the good of those who love him. And I encourage you 